Today we're going to be reading The Tale of the Castle Mice. Once upon a time, there was a family of mice who lived in a doll's house. There were 15 of them, Mr. and Mrs. Perk and their 13 children. They're so well behaved. Their house was owned by a rich earl who lived in the castle. And apart from having one wall missing, it was very grand. What a beautiful doll house. There were two bathrooms, both with running water. Mr. Perk slept in the larger of the two baths and his wife occupied the other. The children made do on shelves in one or the other of the rooms. Being unusually large, the dollhouse was full of nooks and crannies and could have taken many more children, but Mrs. Perk decided to stop at 13. <laughs> the Perks rose early every morning, polished the silver, shook the rugs, and swept up after themselves. Afterwards, when lots of visitors came to visit the castle, they disappeared through holes in the wainscotings, and there wasn't one to be seen. All the visitors to the castle said it was the best kept dollhouse they had ever come across, and many of them took photographs of it. That is a beautiful dollhouse. Mrs. Perk was a good cook, and she, slept, she kept a well-stocked larder of leftovers from the castle kitchen. So the mice never went to bed without supper. One way and another, they lived a happy and carefree life. During the long summer evenings, they played games on the castle lawn. And in winter, when it was cold outside, they sat in the lounge and watched television by moonlight. It was a tiny screen and the picture never changed, but it helped to pass the time. Then one day, something happened. Something happened that threatened to change everything. The family woke to a strange smell. Hmm. It's paint, said Mr. Perk, who knew about these things. They must be decorating the castle. And sure enough, when they looked outside, there were ladders everywhere, but there was worse to come. As the days passed and the castle grew more and more inviting, their doll's house began to look so, look so down at heel, no one bothered to take pictures of it anymore. It was even suggested that they should do away with it altogether. But they can't do that, said Mrs. Perk, can they? Believe me, said Mr. Perk gloomily, there's no such word as can't. Oh no, that would be terrible. That evening, Mr. and Mrs. Perk went for a walk. While they were out, one of the children had an idea. We must do it ourselves, she said, get scrubbing everybody. They found some washing up liquid and in no time at all, there were bubbles everywhere. In fact, there were so many bubbles, they soon lost sight of each other. To make matters worse, the paper came away from the walls and soon there were great piles of it everywhere. As it dried out, the glue set hard, trapping some of the smaller perks who began to cry. The sound of their sobbing brought Mr. and Mrs. Perk running and when they saw the state that their house was in, they could hardly believe their eyes. What are we going to do? asked Mr. Perk. If you ask me, it's a right old mess. They meant well, said Mrs. Perk, so we really can't be cross. But, oh dear, oh dear, I don't know what the Earl will say when he sees it. What do you think he'll say? Let's find out. She didn't have to wait long. The very next morning, the Earl took one look at the doll's house and ordered it to be removed. Goodness me, cried Mrs. Perk. I never thought I would live to see our home taken away on a lorry. We shall, have to ta we shall have to look for other accommodations, said Mr. Perk. I'd sooner have somewhere to live, said, said his wife. Where do you think they're gonna live? But with winter coming on, it wasn't easy to find anywhere. And in the end, they had to make do with the garden shed belonging to the castle. Can you spot all the mice? Christmas was a sorry affair. Food was scarce, nobody had any presents, and they had to pile on top of each other to keep warm. Oh, they're in seed packs. 
Then one day in early spring, when they were beginning to think they would never ever be happy again, the mice heard the sound of cheering and clapping coming from the castle. Hush, everyone, called Mrs. Perk. By popular request, said the Earl as his visitors arrived, the dollhouse has been restored by one of the best craftsmen in the country. I wouldn't mind living there myself instead of in this great castle, that the, he added amid laughter as everyone rushed to take pictures. Oh, their house is back. Oh, that night the Perks moved back into their old home, yay, and held a grand opening party of their own. Mrs. Perk made a cake and there were seven different kinds of cheese. That looks like a fun party. Just think, she said, when it's all over and the children had gone to bed, they, they may be small, but if they hadn't had such a mess of trying to help, this never would have happened at all. Good things often come in small parcels, said Mr. Perk, and if you ask me, the Earl needs as much as needs us as much as we need him. I think it's high time we went to bed. Lights out, everyone, he called. Soon there wasn't a single snore to be heard. The perks were all as quiet as a ha happy mouse could be. Just remember that when things seem hard, there's a rainbow at the end of the tunnel. Bye.